Hi everyone. Today I thought I would show you a little variation on the chalk and lace veneer. So I played around with this lace, actually it was a couple of months ago now, I grabbed a bit of lace and I thought, hmm, I wonder how many different things I can do with this lace. And you know, I think I got to about 11 different looks and I stopped because I could have just gone on forever. But I really like this technique and the one that I'm going to show you, which is just a really slight variation on this one. And because it's really not that complex, I'll throw in another another one as well. So you get a couple of different variations today, all using just um, clay and that bit of lace. So um, in this one, you'll see that the, the lace part is actually the lightest part and the background is dark. So today I'm going to do a variation and show you how to get a dark colored lace with a light background. So we're using exactly the same chalks today so that you can see the difference when the two veneers are finished. We'll put them side by side and you'll see the difference between the two. First thing we need to do is, of course, shave the dark chalk onto our work surface. So I'm just going to coat it to liberally coat with chalk. Remember, I'm using my fingers. As I said to you in the previous video, you can use all sorts of other different applicators, um, sponges, you know, cotton tips, cotton buds, whatever you want to use, however you want to use it, absolutely your choice. I don't mind using my fingers. I'm actually not really a messy worker. Look, that's probably as messy as I'll get. <laughs> so I'm really not that messy at all. So I don't mind using my fingers for these applications. Now, I do want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to give it a really good coating with the chalks. So I've got a good application of chalks on the surface. So the next step is simply going to be position our lace on top. This is such great lace for this technique as well. So the lace goes on top. Remember I'm using the, um, the piece of uh, Perspex on top or acrylic. And I'm going to hold that into place and I'm going to use my brayer. And as I mentioned to you in the previous video, the reason I'm doing this is so that I don't have my lace move. I'm applying a lot of pressure. My lace is not going to move under the surface. So I'm just going to embed it slightly and then I can remove my perspex. And I can continue working with my brayer so that that lace is embedded well and I can see that I've got a bit of moving there already that's probably because I didn't press hard enough so I'm actually going to stand up here even though you can't see me I'm standing up and applying all the pressure I can oh that's looking much better so I'm actually really using quite a firm hand here to get that really well embedded into the surface of the clay. Now, I don't think I mentioned my clay is actually through the pasta machine on a number two setting. I'm using white Kato clay and I've run it through, as I said, on the pasta machine number two, keeping in mind that my pasta machine is an atlas. So number one is my thickest. All right, we have a pretty good impression of our lace into the surface. So the next step, we'll just move all that out of the way. The next step, if you want to, you, oh, sorry, I just need to grab my other tissue blade, which is here. I'm going to remove this from the surface of my paper. And I actually like to use a nice firm blade when I do that. I find if I use... A flexi blade it tends to not work so well for me so I'm using a firm blade I'm going to move a tile into my workspace now and now the next step I have some masking tape you can either use masking tape or sticky tape, packing tape, whatever you want to use. It's completely up to you. But basically what we've done, we coated our clay with the dark colored chalk, which has now been impressed into the clay, of course, when we um, 
pressed our lace down into the surface. Now we're just going to put this on the top. Rub it gently. So I'm just applying a little bit of pressure, not too much at all. And the reason I popped my clay onto the tile is so when I remove the tape, my clay doesn't go anywhere. It's actually stuck to the tile. This is going to take a little while for us to do this, but I'll just... Ooh, I had all these prepared earlier. <laughs> So I'd cut them all and, and done it earlier. I'm not going to make you sit and watch me do the whole of this. So basically this is the idea. See we're moving a little bit at a time. And I'm doing it this way because I'm just applying delicate pressure to the surface. Another piece that was prepared earlier. <laughs> okay. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm pretty well just burnishing over the surface. I'm not rubbing, I'm not pressing down. It's really just a light press over the surface. And if I've got to do this 20 or 30 times, that's what I'll do. I don't want to hurry the process by applying too much pressure because of course that's going to um, distort the lace that I've got, the lace pattern that I've got. And I don't really want to do that. I want to keep the lace pattern nice. You can see that it started to come off. Okay, so, so the chalks have started to come off the surface here. Um, you could actually leave this veneer as it is. Here's one I prepared earlier. So this is a whole different look again. So this one, this veneer, was simply at this stage, I'd taken a bit more of the chalk off. And then I ran it through the pasta machine on a number two setting, and then I dropped it down to a number three and then a number four. So this is how we get this beautiful, beautiful veneer, which has a really smooth surface. And this is just a whole different look again. So you can stop at this stage if you want to, or you can continue and watch me through the next stage. So what I'll do, I'll stop the video now and I'll come back when I've finished removing the chalks that I want to remove. So I finished using the sticky tape to remove the excess chalk from the surface of my clay. And I'm quite happy with how that looks. I've left a little bit on there. You can see I wasn't overly pedantic, but you know, I did get a good lot off the surface so that my new colors are going to um, sit on there quite nicely. All right, the next step is to now shave some of the chalks Remember, onto our paper, not directly onto our clay. If, of course, we shave directly onto our clay, it's going to get into our crevices. So we're just going to work on the next step. And we're simply going to, and I can see, look, I've got a lot of clay in there, a lot of chalk in there, sorry. But we will move that when we do the next part of the, um, of the tutorial. So we're just going to continue. Gosh, and look, I'm doing this really quite rough. Yours is going to be so much nicer than mine because mine is quite rough and I'm doing it quite quickly so that you don't have to spend so long watching me do this and you can get to and create your own. But look, that looks so cool already. And to be honest, some of that chalk that's fallen down into the crevices, I'm actually going to be okay with some of that. But let me just reach behind me. I'm going to grab, of course, my fan brush. And we're going to brush some of the excess. And you can see all that coming out from our the recesses in our clay. And as I said, look, if some of them stay there, truly, it doesn't matter. And if you've already seen the video, the previous video I did, you can fast forward all of this because basically that's it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to run this through the pasta machine on the number two setting. I'm then going to reduce my pasta machine to number three, finally number four. So let me just go do that now and then you'll be able to see the finished piece. 
So I've gone through number two. I'm now going, this is through number three, so I kept it this way and popped it in the pasta machine this way. I'm now gonna do a quarter turn and it's gonna go through the pasta machine this way on number four setting. And there you have it. So, exactly the same technique, but just with that little bit of sticky tape thrown in there and you get a whole different veneer. So there you are. I hope you enjoyed this one. I might actually tack on to the end of this one because I don't think this is going to be very long. So I'll come back in just a moment with another variation. I've just got a really quick technique to show you now. Using some black clay this time, rolled through the pasta machine on a number two setting. I'm using the same piece of lace, it's getting quite grubby, and I'm going to be using some gold paint. So this one is a really, really quick and easy um, veneer technique. as something that I kind of really like, and it just adds something a little bit different to your range of veneers that you can create. So I've just popped some gold, sorry, some gold paint and I'm just using a Liquitex acrylic gold paint. And I've got a soft sponge here that I'm going to run through the, through the paint. And I've just popped my paint on some Multix bake paper so I can get a dis good distribution of that onto my sponge. And I'm basically going to simply roll it. Actually, I'll do this on a tile. Oops, sorry about that. This might be a better process here. I'm just going to load my lace. You can see I've done this before. <laughs> I'm going to load my lace up with the gold paint. Let's just grab a little bit more. And look, you will probably have a much easier way of loading your lace up with paint. This is just the way that I do it. And it's with a lot of things that I do. I'm not saying this is the way it should be done. You have to do it this way. This is the best way. This is just the way I do it. Okay, my paint is wet. I'm going to lay my lace down onto my black clay. And I'm going to position my clean piece of perspex on top. I'm now standing up as well, by the way, so I can get some really good pressure with my brayer. So I'm rolling over the top. You can see I'm using a really good pressure. And this piece of perspex means everything is just staying in place beautifully. It's not moving. So I think I think I've got a fairly good impression there now. Let's just move this off the surface. You can see that some of the paint has gone onto my uh, acrylic sheet, but I'm not gonna stress about that. And I can see that I've actually got a good impression with my lace here. So I'm gonna pull it off the work surface and you'll see that we have that beautiful gold lace embedded into the surface of our clay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to let that dry, of course, and then I'm going to run it through the pasta machine on the number three setting, do a quarter turn and run through on the number four setting. So of course, I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. So I'll come back to you in just a moment and show you the finished piece. My paint is now dry, so I'm going to run this through the pasta machine. And remember, sorry, I'm out of picture here. So I'm going through number two, and I'm gonna drop it down to number three. And remember, I kept my clay this way. Now I'm going to turn my clay, drop it down to number four, my pasta machine that is. Roll it through number four, and Voila, another beautiful veneer, which has got the gold paint embedded into the surface of the clay. So this is ready to use as is. 
Let me just move these things out of the way. I'm going to bring back into frame the veneers that we worked on today. Sorry. Just bear with me for a second. So we've got our gold paint. We have our chalky lace, which was the reverse colors. So our lace is dark and our background is light. And remember, we also popped this one in there as well, which was um, the chalk added onto the surface, the lace impressed, and then the sticky tape or masking tape or what other, what other, whatever sort of tape put on top to remove that excess chalk. And I actually think we've got some really cool veneers that we can use here. Look at these three together. Look very cool. Of course, I've got Kato clay, so it's not sticking together. But there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. And just remember, I am going to come back and show you. I don't have many chalks here, but I'm going to show you how to use all those excess little bits of chalk that get shaved onto your work surface. So thank you everyone for watching today. I really hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to use this lace a little bit more. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.